welcome to QCC's Face the Region. Face the Region is produced by Quinsigamond Community College to assist our region in attaining educational, economic, and personal prosperity. Now, here's your host, WCRN's Hank Stoltz. Good afternoon, I'm Hank Stoltz, and this is QCC's Face the Region on News and Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. We're going to be speaking today about a new dietary program at QCC, and to help us do that is Professor Pat Hutchinson, Hospitality and Recreation Management, Coordinator of the Hospitality and Recreation Management Program, and the Dean of Business Engineering and Technology, Kathy Wrench, is with us as well. Thank you both for, for being here. Our pleasure. So uh, let me ask you, uh, Pat, if to just kind of give us a little bit of an, of an overview about this dietary program. This is, this is something new. I mean, this is something of breaking news here on QCC's Face the Region. <laughs> this is breaking news. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we are expanding our food service track to include um, dietary management, which combines food service um, operations, being able to cook, along with being able to plan diet um, menus that are nutritionally sound for the population. And most of the people who would work in this field would be in assisted living um, facilities, hospitals, schools. There's a, a new national standards coming down for our public schools, and they are quite specific now about children's nutrition. And so these would be folks who can cook in quantity, um, serve their constituents and make sure that the diet is sound in terms of its nutritional value. Well, there is such a focus on this now, and there is so much talk. You were just talking about uh, about the youngsters. There's so much focus on this childhood obesity. And, I mean, I'm reading stories now in which we're worried about, like, toddlers being uh, being too heavy. Well, in fact, um, this is, according to some statistics, the first generation who will live less long than their parents. Really? And um, the, the every couple of years as I update lectures, I find happening. And that's really what it is then. It is this, uh, this, this ep- just to have you elaborate a little bit on what you just said, it is then this, this epidemic about if we're too heavy, diabetes, these other health risks, and that's what ends up putting us in the hospital. You're 70, 80 years old, and it can get to be quite costly. It's, um, it is very costly. And, and Hank, I think... You know, we have to go back a little ways. It used to be that the food service industry was all about entertainment, and people would dine out for a special occasion. Mm. Um, It wasn't an everyday fare. And so the menus were designed really for, um, for pleasure. But right now, the most consumed vegetable in the country is French fries by a wide margin. Wow. Yeah, by a wide sure. margin. And so we're finding that people, in fact, are eating 60% of their meals away from home. In other words, prepared by someone else. And so whatever goes into that, whatever preservatives, whatever um, nutrients or non-nutrients go into that, are, are, consume, are taking up 60% of the food that people are eating. So our industry really hadn't thought about it before because we're still the entertainment industry. People like to dine out, and we are um, in the leisure segment. Um, So what's what's shifted is that we're eating, the everyday person is eating their meals at school, they're eating their meals um, where they live, they're they're counting on us to feed them, and and it's our job to now catch up and make sure that we're feeding them something nutritionally sound. Kathy is the the Dean of Business Engineering and Technology. As you're kind of overseeing this, as as, as you're looking at this in in your department, I mean, sort of your your overview, your your take on this, what Pat was just saying is, is so true. Uh, I mean, this is, the whole focus now is, is shifting. That's right. So, you know, I've been in my position as academic dean for this area for about 10 years. This program uh, was originally called Hotel and Restaurant Management, but it wasn't long as Pat and I were working together, and I really didn't have expertise in this area before I met Pat, but as I listened to her and the changes that were happening in the industry, we both realized we have to rename the degree program first Mm. because it isn't a true reflection of what we are preparing our students to do. So several years ago, we changed the name of the associate degree to hospitality and recreation management, which was a much wider umbrella for all the kinds of uh, uh, managers that we're preparing. It is an applied management program. For all the kinds of professionals we are preparing and for the the ways that they can enter that field. Dietary management's been on Pat's radar for a while. We just didn't really have the venue 
um, for the expansion, and then this partnership with the Marlboro Senior Center came to be, yeah. and it, you know, everything came together. Boy, and, and again, I mean, you know, yeah. you only have to open up the paper, turn Absolutely. on the TV, listen to the radio, and hear about how really obsessed we are with uh, with calories and everything else. Although I would have to say, for all that we were obsessing about it, uh, the stories seem to be that we're headed in the in the wrong direction. Everybody That's seems right. to be drinking more water or joining more health clubs or whatever the case may be. But we're all we're all headed in in, in the wrong ways. Uh, just uh, you know, maybe to uh, pat some of the, the things that that might be in this program that might be be new. I mean, listen, even just when I go out, uh, boy, even just to go to a fast food place now, and they'll put like the calories next to it. It, it, it. It's funny what a big impact that will will have. It's not as if I thought that I was going somewhere and, geez, I must be getting some healthy meal. But to see it say, like, this burger and fries combination with this drink that is, you know, 10 times larger than anything you'd ever need uh, is 2,000 calories it has an impact. It does, you know? indeed. It does. Um, so I think our two tracks will work closely. Yeah. There's some overlapping courses. Um, but certainly we will be looking for those people who are responsible for feeding the same population over and over right. to make sure that there is a diversity and that the food is tasty at the same time. That it, well, it, you know. it goes back then to this, this partnership that you have with the, uh, with right. the senior center is, as well. Is this a population, is it the same, I mean, for younger people when we were talking about the schools? There it seems as if maybe it's the snacks, it's the French fries. For an older population, for the senior population, is it, is it a different concern? Is it different worries? So the, the worries are the same, uh, but the, the reasons for the worries are perhaps a little different. Um, one's taste diminishes a little bit as one ages. Um, dental health is, is a concern. And actually, access to food is a concern. We have um, you know, some places where it's hard to get really fresh and nutritious sure. kinds of programs. Yeah, I know. I've heard about these food deserts that, that we actually actually have. Why don't we pick it up there in just a moment? But, but Dean, I know that you have to you have to leave us. I mean, is there if you just kind of want to maybe anything that that we need to know in the in the last minute of this segment that we should be be focusing on? <clears throat> There's a couple of things. I first of all, I think it's uh, we have some opportunities that people are not aware of. Both people, meaning prospective students, as well as employers in the region. This program is a great example of where we're actually looking not so much to partner with the hotels and restaurants, although we always want those partnerships. But for dietary management, we are really looking to connect with hospitals, long-term care facilities, senior living communities, public school systems, not in the traditional way we did before through our nurse education program or our early childhood program, but around dietary management. This is a whole field that we feel we can provide some great professional development for people already working and some great career ladder opportunities for people who want to make the move. Very good. And we'll, we'll pick it up right there. We'll talk a little bit more about how this really is going to then serve the community. Of, of central Massachusetts. Dean Kathy Wrench, thank you so much for, for making some time to stop by, be with us in the beginning here in our conversation with Professor Pat Hutchinson. We'll continue on QCC's of Face the Region on News and Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. I'm Hank Stoltz. This is QCC's of Face the Region on News and Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Dietary program here at QCC. We're speaking with Professor Pat Hutchinson, Hospitality and Recreation Management coordinator of the Hospitality and Recreation Management Program. And as we've, we've heard, uh, a program that has really kind of gone through some changes over the last, that the last year and continuing to, to, to keep updated, to keep up with what we need here in, in central Massachusetts. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that, about the way in which this program then seems to be aimed specifically at people who will be able to serve uh, all the various populations right here in central Massachusetts. So um, I think one of the advantages that our program has, Hank, is that we have um, found ourselves at two different senior centers now. So we work out of the Worcester Senior Center with our more typical a la carte program. And our partnership in Marlboro is that we will be providing that congregate meal that the elders would come in Monday through Friday to, to have. And that will give our students experience in menu planning. It'll give them experience to actually serve the food um, every every day, Monday through Friday, and really to evaluate how well they are producing. Right. Um, and that will give them some hours and experience so that when they go out, they'll have a little bit under their belt. Now, you talked about how, I mean, especially for, for seniors, perhaps there's some diminished taste or other things that you have to take into account. A at the same time, and this goes back to something that, that you had said about, uh, you know, for years, of course, 
hospitality, so geared towards, boy, what looks good. Uh, let's give you, I mean, it seemed as if, uh, you know, give you more, more, more. I know I've read these things where, you know, uh, our, our parents or our grandparents, what they thought of as a portion is, is maybe even half of what we normally would think of now. We just like to put on more and, and more. When you're putting together this menu for the, for the seniors, I mean, obviously, you don't want it to be something that is here. Isn't this wonderful? It's nutritious, but somebody takes a look at it and goes, ah, oh, that doesn't seem very exciting. How do you kind of, you know, make sure that it's good for you, but, boy, it looks appetizing, it tastes appetizing, and it's something that you actually want? Well, you hit the challenge. You hit the nail right on the head. And, um, of course, as consumers, we want good value for our money, even if it's packing pounds on us or not giving us what we need nutritionally. So we definitely have that challenge, and it's a it's a good lesson for our students to learn. Um, so we will look at some of the um, – Maybe some of the extra pizzazz. Can we um, can we add a, se- a sauce that that makes it a little bit special? Can we do um, just something extra special? Last night we had an event and we had roasted chestnuts, um, just because Perfect. it was something a- it, absolutely. Perfect. It was just something extra. It wasn't the main course, but people began to feel as though that were you know part of uh, part of a holiday experience. And so I think that the students will be well challenged to figure out how they can stay competitive. Competitive, um, compete with the people who may or may not be giving all the attention to the nutritional value, which you know costs right. us a little more. Sure. And then if we're doing this well, our portions will be smaller. There's an organization here in Worcester itself called Woo Food, and the people who started that um, taught us to use a default menu so that the things that are really healthy are the things that go with it, and you have to ask for the others. So, for example, it wouldn't come with fries. It would come with a salad, and you'd be forced to ask for the, pro- for the right. fries with it. The other idea that Woo Food has that I think we may try to use up there is the idea that you would take half your portion now and that the other half might be available to go. And I think that's a double win for some of the elders who might be going home and and not dining with somebody in the evening. So we're looking at those kinds of creative approaches to how we can put this together. Well, and it goes back to the value as well. I mean, boy, nobody says about, hey, I went. And I got this meal, and then I've got dinner or I've got lunch for the next day is, as well. And there, and, and it goes to that value. Because value is where they get it. And it, it, as we've been talking about, and I just, the, the example that I guess, you know, came into my mind is you go to the movie theater and you say, oh, okay, I'll get a, I'll get a drink to go with, uh, with, with the popcorn. And they go, you know, for a dollar more, you can have the ridiculous size. And you go, well, I don't really need to drink everything that's in that ridiculous size, but, yeah. It's only a buck more. It's a better. It, it's a better right. bargain, or, or whatever it is. It's a nickel more, or whatever. And that's one of the things that puts these empty. And this is what I think we hear a lot of: these empty calories, calories. that we seem to now enjoy a lot of foods like soda or whatever the case may be, that they're just empty calories. We don't even realize that we're putting all these extra calories on each day. Yeah. And the evolutionary biologists tell us that we're hardwired in the human being for salt, fat, mm. sweets. Very hard to find in nature. You would never get too much of it if you had to go out and source it mm. by gathering and hunting. So those are pleasure points for us, and um, it, it keeps people going back for those. And when you have an industry that's just making it readily available to you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I love this part, though, too, about QCC. We, we talk about this often, Quinsigman Community College. And even how about what you're focused on now is so community based helps people in the in the community uh, obviously you know students who are who are involved in this and, and learning about this they're going to make this this their career uh, tell me a little bit about some of those those opportunities then certificate programs is it uh, associate's degree bachelor's degrees eventually we're really um, proud of our programming and we start even with workforce training we've we've operated under a number of grants in a program called cooking up a culinary career we've worked with the Hector Reyes house in advance of their opening Cafe mm-hmm. Reyes. We still do annual updates with them and training with their with their folks. Um, we've worked with the Worcester Youth Center. So we start in some non-credit areas. As well, we can respond to employer needs for serve safe training and things like that. The certificates are for credit, and we have um, two now in food service. It would be the dietary manager and the regular food service track. The food service track is designed for someone who has experience in food service but is looking for management. 
and the um, hospitality certificate then is mostly customer service and financial. It's it's a kind of a down and dirty, yeah. getting you ready to go in management. Um, the degree allows them to specialize a little bit more. Um, from event planning to recreation to um, this food area. So, well, it really encompasses quite a bit. I mean, that's interesting to me. So, I mean, you could go and work somewhere in a, in a senior center or in that type of an environment, or you could, you know, in a, in a school or a, a restaurant. I mean, you know, there's all these different avenues now, but all of them seem to be coming back to people want there to be sort of this accountability, or as you put it in, in the beginning, uh, all of a sudden, you know, the hospitality interest industry is going to be a little bit more interested in making sure that it's healthy because that's what the public is going to be demanding and is going to want at the same time, of course, that we want you to make it look beautiful and <laughs> taste great and, you know, all the things that uh, that, that, that we want with the, with the dining out experience. But we are watching those those calories. Yep. And oh. it's not just calories, right? I mean, you, you talked about calories. that. It's I mean, it really, I mean, you know, the, the, the calories is, is one part of it. But, I mean, I guess there's sort of these good calories and these and these bad calories as part of it, too. And all of that, uh, I'm sure, gets covered in, in, a, in a whole variety of these classes. It does. Tell me a little bit more about this, this raw food, then. So people eating at home um, often don't know what to do with the raw food section of the grocery store. And if they have a community garden or their own garden, they're bringing in produce, and they're not sure how to approach that. So we're finding that there's a general need for some enrichment courses in things like canning, um, food preservation, basic yeah. food prep. So yeah. we've been doing some of that as well. It's kind of fun. Absolutely. All right. Straight ahead, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. We'll talk more about this uh, this dietary program that is here at QCC. We'll tell you how you can get involved. If we've piqued your interest, we certainly want you to get in in touch with, uh, with, with the school, whether it's directly with Professor Hutchinson or with QCC. We'll tell you all about that straight ahead on News and Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. This is QCC's Face the Region Talking Diet here today. Professor Pat Hutchinson is with us, Hospitality and Recreation Management, Coordinator of the Hospitality and Recreation Management Program. I'm Hank Stoltz, News and Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. And, Pat, this has got to be a growth industry. I mean, everybody's really interested in this topic. It is a growth industry, and we have, um, we have excellent employment records. About half of our students go on for further education, but those that are ready to step out and work um, find a job pretty easily. We also have statistically about 40% of the folks in our industry are entrepreneurs, and we have mm. a lot of um, cottage industry folks and a lot of people who go into business for themselves. Now, when you... Yeah, that's uh, that's fascinating. So I'm going to go into business for myself. So I come to QCC. I'm in the dietary program. I'm learning about all of these different things. And then I'm going to open up a, a, a diner or a, a restaurant. Is that sort a food of? food truck, uh, yeah. a catering business. Um, one of our early success stories were two gals that came. Um, they had been moms that received assistance, and um, they needed to be working to qualify for things. And they ended up catering funerals. Um, wow, and they worked, they worked through the churches, and they often used the fellowship halls. Yeah. And um, it was often Monday through Friday at times when their children were in school. And um, they are still doing quite well up um, north of here in the Lemister area. No, see, but I mean, that's great. So they, they found a, a real niche that they were able to, to fill. So there's a couple of things then. So in that case, when you're that entrepreneur, in this case, you know, with, with that catering business specifically, they really did have to take advantage of everything that you talked about. It's not only then being able to put together your menu, and I'm sure, uh, you know, different religious restrictions, or so they had to know a, a, a lot of different things there. But to actually be able to set up and run a business, I mean, you know, the math part of it. So you can come, you know, 25% of your classes are going to be in the uh, in the business end of it. Yes. Uh, did you find that the, the people who are excited about one part of it are, are able to, to handle both? Some people might just be much more interested in the, I want to put together the menus, I want to plan menus, others might be... Uh, you know, much more actually excited about maybe, you know, maybe their part of it doesn't end up being 25% of the business courses. Maybe they get more involved in the business end. But you really, especially if you're going to open up your own place, they have to have that total package. You do have to have that total package. And we work very hard in the beginning to help students find out their strengths so that they can partner wisely. Um, and find maybe another person that has the opposite or complementary strengths mm -hmm. to go with them. Um, 
So, yeah. You've talked about the, uh, you know, the, the, the deals, the, the way in which uh, there's this great relationship between the Worcester Senior Center, the Marlboro Senior Center now as well. So students uh, sometime in the classroom here on the main campus in Worcester and sometimes out at these different <coughs> locations, are they mostly kind of out in the field? All of our hospitality and recreation management courses are offered out in the field. They're all applied. So even if you were taking the accounting class out there, you would be uh-huh. using the accounting, uh, the food costs, the counting with real food. What did we use? How did we price it? So um, everything is applied, and I think it helps some of our students whose best learning opportunities come from actually seeing what they're doing. So if you're talking about putting together a P&L, we've just done the monthly P&L. Right. If you're talking about ordering, we've, we're doing the ordering, taking an inventory, um, marketing an event, all of those things they're actually doing and then calculating it or reporting about it in their classes. Pat, as we we talk about the the dietary program, all the different things that go into it, it if somebody specifically says, I've got an opportunity to take over the food truck, I need to know the following. I mean, is it they're here for a year or they're and they're up and and running and somebody else says, boy, I'm really looking at that catering business or I'm looking at, at, at going on and being in the... Uh, you know, hospitality, restaurants, hotels, whatever it may be, or working at a senior center, and is that more of they really should be looking at two years or or four years and going somewhere else? Yes, I think that the um, certainly there are some that require more. Our industry is pretty nimble. And if you've got the drive and you have the, a lot of it's personality because we are a people business, um, and you can get the basic business pieces down, you can go quite far with an associate degree. Um, some of the larger corporations, some of the bigger hotels, those multi-million dollar ventures, they're going to be looking for the right. bachelors, maybe even the MBA. Here in central Massachusetts, I mean, I suppose it's everything. I mean, I, there is there wouldn't be anything that you would have to go really uh, anywhere else. I mean, I, we have you know, certainly major Hotel change, double tree. Everybody is it, it seems to be right in the in this area. Absolutely. And obviously, unlimited opportunities if you want to do your own. This, this whole food truck thing is is fascinating to me. That's really exploded. The same thing day after day, and yeah. that food truck doesn't have to stay in the same location day after day. Oh yeah, no, exactly. I mean that the food truck uh, portion of it is 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 fascinating to me. That you could have. I mean, now they have, of course, that big. Uh, it's not a rally, but I mean, you know, they they down at Elm Park. They bring in yep. literally, a, I don't know, it seems like a hundred food trucks, and right. they have everything imaginable that are that are in those uh, in those food trucks. Listen, we, we just have a, a minute or so left. What is it that that people? Anything that we we haven't covered that people need to know about the program to get into the in, into the program? Is it simply an interest that they have to have? Should they have taken something in high school? Many people, I'm sure come back later in life for a program like this. Yes, so we have all of that, and we have pretty easy entrance in. Um, again, by the time you get to the associate degree, you're going to need to be taking some of your math and English to get short up. But to get started, um, we'll get you started right away. And our program that's happening out in Marlboro, all of those classes for the certificate will take place in Marlboro, and you could take them all there or you could take some of the complimentary classes um, back he- here in Worcester. Um, so getting in touch with me or getting in touch with the college admissions program would be a great beginning. We run our classes as a block schedule, so we know that sometimes people can only get Monday off, and they would be able to complete just on Mondays. Um, we don't ask for them to come back multiple times during a week. So um, That's great. Yeah, so I yeah. think it's it's we, we try to be sensitive to what it's going to take for the working student with a family um, to get through yeah. successfully. Great. So qcc.edu, kind of the one-stop shopping to be able to find out everything Absolutely. great. Okay. Uh, that's where you should head. Uh, what a great, great program. And, again, uh, great opportunities, real growth industry right here in, in central Massachusetts and, and all around. But come on to QCC and – and, and that's where you, uh, where, you should be, uh, where you should be going. Professor Pat Hutchinson, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate it, and thank you for being with us right here on QCC's Face the Region on News & Talk Radio, AM 830 WCRN. This has been Quinsicum and Community College's Face the Region with your host, Hank Stoltz. Join us again next weekend on AM 830 WCRN.